The Hearts of Gold podcast is brought to you by the Grow and Share Network, produced by Off the Walter Media Productions. Welcome to Hearts of Gold. Today we have Kelsey with us. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, it's nice to meet everyone. Can you tell us about your Girl Scout Gold Award project? Of course. So uh, I guess I'll start off when uh, it first came to my mind. So I was thinking about doing my Gold Award project um, towards the end of, you know, obviously the end of being a Girl Scout. And I wanted to do something that I knew was going to impact other people. And I also wanted to do something that I was passionate about. Um, so I was pondering what I was going to do. And I knew that I wanted to include music in my Gold War project. And I knew that the community or group of people that I wanted to impact was my school at the time. So I was a senior at uh, Monte Tech High School in Massachusetts. And um, I was so passionate about band and music. And um, the thing about my school is that it was a trade school. So instead of focusing on things like the arts, like um, painting or music or um, anything of that matter, like dance or drama, instead of focusing on things like that, we focused on the trades. So plumbing, early childhood, which is uh, what I did. I did early childhood, um, electrical, cosmetology, all those things were the main focus. And because of that, we didn't have a budget for a music program. So I decided to incorporate it in a way that we could afford it and that our students could impact from the program. So uh, what I ended up doing was I um, joined forces with my principal and um, he helped me to figure out what we could do and what what we, like the budget that we had and what we could do so that we this could become a reality. So uh, we decided to partner up with another high school, uh, Lemonster High School, which is just a few towns over. Um, and apparently they actually needed some help as well with their music program. So we decided to combine our musical students with their musical students because they actually have a band. Um, so, and it's, it wasn't as large as they had hoped it would have been at the time. So we ended up combining with them and the band director, director actually came and he gave us the music. Um, he gave us the slips if we needed uh, to borrow an instrument, which was very, it was so cool. Like I, I didn't even know that he would have done that, but uh, everything just seemed to fall into place. I organized um, the bus rides back and forth. So our students could hop on the bus right after school ended and they could be dropped off at Lemonster High School. We get to practice with them for the band and then they would bring us back to the school so that we could go home. And actually before um, all of that even happened, I had organized a poll that the students uh, were to take, my, like the students at my school. Um, it was just uh, a regular poll that everyone took. If you were interested in music and what instrument you played, and if you were um, interested in joining the band at all, and then we actually had the Lemonster High School band come to our school and they performed uh, during the lunches so that everyone could see what they would be a part of. And it was just something that I, I didn't know was possible, but with the help of my principal, with the help of my mentor from the Gold Award Council, um, from help from my mom and my family and friends and even my own Girl Scout troop, um, we were able to make this a reality. That's the bulk of it. You know, we had um, concert band, we had choir. It was, and it's for winter concert and spring concert, and it's a reoccurring thing. It, uh, it's still long lasting at my high school now. So that's um, more than I can ever ask for. So that's the bulk of my Gold War project. Obviously your school didn't have music. So partnering with the school that had music benefited your school. So how did the other school benefit or what prompted them to open their doors to include your students? Well, the band director, Barry Hudson, at the school was having a hard time, not with, obviously not with um, funds, but it was more of finding the interest in his students at the school. So he thought that if we could get students from another school that were so interested in playing in the band that maybe it would spark something in the students at his school. And also 
um, it's, it's a, it's a unity thing, you know, it's unity from one community to another community coming together and becoming one. So I think he was so excited about that because we, instead of just having one concert at Lemonster High School, we had two. So we had one at Monty Tech and then we also had one at Lemonster and it was his band grew. And I think he was excited about that as a whole. He, he wanted more people to experience the love of music and for him to have the chance to teach that was something that was so important to him. And I think that's why he opened up the doors to welcome the Monty Tech students into his band. What really drove you to want to have music as part of your gold award? When I was in elementary school, I, um, I, it's not, not saying I was never really good at anything, but um, I was, I was really good at music. And it was the one thing that I could really say that, you know, I love this and it's so important to me. And, and as I grew up, it was, it was evident in everything that I did. And um, music made me feel good. It made others feel good. It created memories for me. And it was such an important part of my life that I wanted to share that with others. And I knew that music wasn't just something that was important to me, that it was important to everyone else. And for me to go to Monty Tech, and I, I remember I was so sad because there was nothing. There was no musical background at all, no band or anything. And and I didn't want anyone else to have to feel like that when they came to a trade school. I wanted them to feel like they could take a trade, but also still uh, make sure that their love of music was fulfilled. And I think that that was something that was so important to me is I don't want anyone else to have to feel that same way. So instead of no music being in the school, I brought it. <laughs> Cause you know, why not? And that's why I, I love music since I was younger. And I wanted to make sure that I instilled that in my Gold War project because um, I, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else that I would have loved more than to um, bring music into my Gold War project. So that meant a lot to me. What was your biggest challenge during your project and how did you overcome it? Trying to get the same people to almost like rejoin, I think the thing was, it was, so we were constantly getting new people joining the band, but I think the problem was not everyone wanted to be bussed over to the school. They wanted our own music program. They didn't want to have to go to the school every day after school. And I think it was trying to make sure that people understood where we were at and that this is what we were, this is, this is our stage right now. And this is where we are. And this is where I want us to be. But right now, this is, this is where we are. This is the present. And I think that it was frustrating trying to get everyone to understand that, you know, and they were really upset. And it was something that I didn't have control because it was something that was higher than me. In a way, I kind of did feel bad because it was my Gold War project. It was something that I wanted to do and something that I had started, and I think that that was the hardest challenge, definitely, making everyone happy. And so then what would be your biggest takeaway from your Gold Word project? Knowing that when I left high school, when I graduated, that there was going to be a freshman who had the same love for music that I had, the same will to, to want to join a band and join a chorus. I knew that there was going to be someone else, just like me, who came along and said, you know what, I want to be in a band when I go to high school. I don't want to have to not love music just because I go to a trade school. And that freshman is going to join the band and he or she is not going to have to worry about wondering if he or she couldn't do music in a trade school because there is going to be music. And I think that that is my biggest takeaway is the future of the students and Monty Tech and their love for music being instilled. Any special stories from your project? One of the stories actually when um, when the Lemon Star High School band came to perform for us when I had the um, polls that uh, all the students at my school took, when the band came, they were so amazed at the the um the school and it, it wasn't like okay, they weren't like amazed at the school, but they were amazed at the students because we had something called ROTC at our school and it was like a military program. Um, that our students could take if they were interested in doing the military or if they just wanted to um, just do it, you know, just as a an elective. And I remember they had asked, they're like, <laughs> they said, why are some of the students wearing like military gear? Like, are they 
they they were saying like are they like going out into the military and i <laughs> i just had to explain and say like no um it's a trade school like um some of us are interested in the military so they join the program called rotc and some people were in cosmetology outfits and culinary outfits and i just think that it was so interesting for students from just like a regular uh, public school to come to a school like that and say, you know, because they were just so interested, they just didn't know. And um, I just thought that that was one of the funniest things of them saying that. But then also, um, since I was like the leader of the whole project, they were asking me tons of questions because I had to lead them back and forth in the school. Like they were waiting in the auditorium and then I had to bring them down to the cafeteria. And a lot of them were just asking me tons of questions. And my principal, I remember he told me, he said, he said, you know, you have to bring them to the bathroom. You have to show them where to go and, and all that stuff. And I remember giving out my number to tons of people and they contacted me about all of the upcoming events and how I was going to get um, the students on the bus, where I was going to bring the instruments. And that was just one of the funnest stories that I think I have is just them seeing me as that leadership role. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed, but it was fun. I loved it. How did you choose the path of a trade school rather than regular high school or another specialty school? When I was in middle school, um, graduating from eighth grade, there were two options for me. One was Fitchburg High School. It was just a regular public school. And uh, the other one was Monty Tech. And it's not that I don't live in the best place because I do. Um, it's it's a different place, you know. But um, I think I was a little worried about the community at the other school. It was just, it didn't have the best reputation. And actually my brother um, went to that school and my mom actually works there. She's a lunch lady there. And she had said, you know, like you can go to that school, but you know, I don't know if the people are the best. I don't know if you're going to thrive in a community like that. Um, and I, you know, it was all up down to my decision anyway, but uh, my brother was in the honors program there. So it was a little different. He was um, with some people that he could relate to and that he trusted and everything. And I just didn't try out for that honors program. And I think that that, I possibly would have gone there if I um, wanted to get into the honors program, but I decided that I wanted a atmosphere where I felt comfortable and that uh, I could grow. And I also knew that I, was interested in either doing business or early childhood. So I knew that going to a trade school, I would actually be able to graduate from high school. And in case I didn't want to go to college, I would have the opportunity to come right out of high school and start working. So mm -hmm. that was something that that was important and that I was looking for. So that's why I chose uh, the trade school. So what other Girl Scout experiences have you had? When it comes down to it, all of the badges that I've done uh, we've done so many crazy things. Um, we well, we have our encampment. Well, now now that I'm not a Girl Scout anymore, I don't have the encampment. But <laughs> when I was, we'd have the encampment um, every every year, and we would go and we would. Uh, it would just be with um, the city. So I live in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. So it would be the whole Fitchburg encampment and all the Girl Scouts, and we would. Uh, stay there for two nights and we would roast marshmallows and sing songs and and do activities throughout the day we'd have archery and field games and we would go canoeing or kayaking and we've not only just the encampment but we've had tons of other experiences to go out and camp and to experience the outdoors uh, we've done community service projects um, we've done sisterhood badges one time this one event that we did, we went to the Salem Witch Museum. And this was, I think this was maybe like three and a half years ago, possibly, but um, that was fun too. We went around the city. Uh, we got to experience the Salem Witch Trials, which was something that was very different. We, we've we never actually really done something like that before. It was a little creepy, but we had fun. Um, and then we have our, we always save up money from the cookies that we sell and we go on summer trips. So actually this past summer was our, our last trip, sadly, but um, we had gone to Gloucester, Mass Gloucester, Massachusetts, and we stayed at the beach. Uh, we went shopping. We always spend um, not a lot of money because we like to go out and do an expensive dinner all together. And this was just our, 
our last hurrah before, you know, college and everyone goes off and does their, their own adventures and stuff. But, you know, camping trips, summer trips, and just fulfilling uh, the badges as a Girl Scout in each stage. So that's definitely some of the, the journeys that we've been on. What other places did you travel to with your troops during the summer? Two years in a row, we went to Canopy Lake Park. That was a fun, a fun adventure. We went to Maine one time, Maine. So we either go to the beach <laughs> or we go to an amusement park. That's um, normally what we do because my... My Girl Scout troop, we just loved the beach. We loved the sunny weather and we just loved to be outside and have fun and enjoy each other's company. And even if we didn't even go anywhere, we honestly would just like be together eating ice cream or something and we just have a blast. But it's either the beach or an amusement park. Those are the summer trips that we did. And in addition to Girl Scouts, you also have a YouTube channel. Can you tell us about your YouTube channel? I have actually been on YouTube for so long and some of them were just like, you know, the weird childhood ones where you post like videos of the dolls and stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I started my YouTube channel six, five years ago, maybe four. Um, and I started to make videos that were uh, Christian uplifting videos. So I am actually, I'm a Christian and my faith is something that's so important to me. And uh, without the help and the love of Jesus Christ. I, I don't even know where I would be in my life today, but he is so evident in my life and he is what I live for. You know, he, he is just everything to me. And in order to not just reach my own community here in Fitchburg, and I go to college in Pennsylvania. So um, not to just reach Pennsylvania and Massachusetts, but I wanted to reach from one end to, of a sea to the other, you know, and just global. So I started my YouTube channel to um, express my love of Jesus Christ and to impact a generation, um, whether I was in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania, I know that, you know, it doesn't matter. Like everyone watches YouTube, right? So anyone could watch it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why I started my YouTube channel. And, um, I do singing videos and uh, mostly Christian videos, singing videos, and sometimes they're kind of different, like the fun videos, but normally I'll just stick to the two topics. And what kind of feedback have you gotten on your YouTube channel? I've actually gotten a lot of feedback that's that's very positive and, and lots of love. You know, I, on my Instagram, I normally, you know, I normally just follow my friends and everything, but every so often I'll get a message almost every other week and it'll just be, and it'll say ding and it'll say, you know, like, uh, you're so positive. They say, you know, you, you impact my life in a way that has never been impacted before. And to, to see that, that just means so much to me. And it, it warms my heart to see that people who aren't even in the same country as me are getting impacted by, um, by the words that I say. And, and then I, I, when I respond, I just say, you know, it's, it's not me, you know, it's the love of Jesus Christ that's in me coming out when I say something and it's just a big hug from the Lord, you know, and it, it just means so much to me to, to hear that positive feedback that I am fulfilling the plan that God has put on my life. He's called me and I'm just glad that I can do that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience? oftentimes life can be crazy. It can seem like you're, you're in one place and then you're in another place. You're happy, then you're sad, then you're all over the place. And in the end, we all hold on to something that, that gets us through the end of the day. And, and for me, that is my faith. That's um, the Lord, that's Jesus Christ. And, and even if like, like we're all different, we're all from different backgrounds and religions and, and um, faiths and everything. But I think that as long as you have the will to, to do something and the passion to impact um, a generation, whether it's, whether you um, uh, do business or you do music or you're in culinary or it, you know, it doesn't matter what background you come from or what you do. Um, we all have so much potential and we can, impact the world in an amazing way. And I just wanted to share that with, with everyone to just not give up when everything seems crazy, when you feel like you can't make it. It's when you hit rock bottom that you know that you can get up and rise up to the top. So 
rock bottom is is not the end it's rock bottom is the start and then you make your way up and um change a generation so that's that's all i have to say and then and then i have my wrap-up question which feels so silly after that but how do you how do you make your s'mores <laughs> okay i don't burn the marshmallow okay that's <laughs> disgusting i don't know who does that you don't burn it I, so i take my marshmallow i put it over the flame like you know not in the flame like people do you crazy anyway so i put it over the flame and right when it gets like golden brown perfectly golden brown then the chalk i take the the graham cracker put the chocolate on top and then put my golden brown marshmallow and then take the graham cracker push it on top and then pull it off that's how i make my s'mores <laughs> well thanks for joining us today of course thank you so much for having me please make sure to click subscribe so you always know when new episodes are released and check our blog for tips and tricks on your gold award and don't forget to power your passion and conquer your challenges the hearts of gold podcast is brought to you by the grow and share network produced by off the walter media productions thank you for listening and spreading the word on what we do if you want to share your story of how you earned your goal award, reach out and send an email to growandshare at outlook.com. Be sure to listen to the newest episodes on your favorite podcast app, as well as view the full video episodes on youtube.com slash Cheryl M. Robinson. That's youtube.com slash Cheryl, the letter M, Robinson. Take care, and we'll see you next time.